My name is Jamie DeYoung and I created this video, The Comparison Test, Important Inequalities, for the course Math 136 at the University of Toronto. So we're going to be looking at some important inequalities that you'll use when trying to figure out what functions to compare with. And we'll be proving those. Now, while you might not be accustomed necessarily to writing lots of proofs, these ones only use techniques that you learned uh, in Math 135. So the first one is that if 0 is less than a and less than b, so two positive numbers where a is the smaller of the two, then that means that the reciprocals of those are also positive, but that 1 over b is less than 1 over a. So for an example of what I mean, we have 2 and 4. These are positive integers. Uh, 2 is less than 4. But when you take the reciprocal, you find that a quarter is less than a half. So when we take the reciprocal, we switch the direction of the inequality, as long as both numbers are actually positive. So why is this true? Well, let's consider the function that takes the reciprocal. So f of x equals 1 over x. We know how to take the derivative of that. We get negative 1 over x squared. Now, we're only interested in positive x values. Now, in, and when x is positive, f of x is 1 over a positive number, so it's greater than 0, which means the function is always positive. We can also consider what happens to the derivative. We have negative 1 divided by a positive number, x squared. So the derivative is negative, which means the function is strictly decreasing. That means it's always decreasing, it never stays the same or goes up, it's always going down. Now, if a function is decreasing, that means that if you apply it to uh, a and b, where a is the smaller value, you get that f of b is less than f of a. And in this case, f of b is 1 over b, and f of a is 1 over a. So this is precisely the inequality that we said we'd like to prove. So that's how we deal with reciprocals with inequalities. Now I'd like to have a look at exponentials and logarithms. So I claim that if you have a real number x, then x is less than e to the power x. And if you have a positive number x, then the natural log is less than x. So we'll start with the exponential. It's certainly not too difficult for x less than or equal to 0. We have that the exponential function is always positive, and if, therefore if x is less than or equal to 0, the exponential, being positive, must be bigger than x. So those values are relatively straightforward. The question now is what happens when x is positive? It's less clear because e to the power x and x are both positive in that case. So we're going to look at the function that gives the difference between them. f of x equals e to the power x minus x. And what we'd like to do is show that that's greater than 0. If the difference between them is positive, then e to the power x is bigger. So we'll take the derivative of this function. We get e to the power x minus 1. Now we would like to find the critical points of it. So we'll set that derivative equal to 0. That gives us e to the power x equals 1, which means x is the natural log of 1, or in other words, 0. So 0, 0 is the only critical point of this function. Now, we have a critical point, but the next thing we generally want to know is what type is it. So we take the second derivative, which is e to the power x. We evaluate this at the critical point, 0, and we get 1. So that means the critical point is a minimum. Now, if the critical point is a minimum, and that minimum is at a value of 0, then that means f of x has to always be positive. So e to the power x is bigger than x for all x greater than 0, as well as the previously determined x less than or equal to 0. Now, we had one more inequality, which was the natural logarithm compared with x. So the natural logarithm is a function, and we can take the derivative of it. We get 1 over x, and we know this is positive for positive values of x. So if we have a positive function, that means if you apply it to x and e to the x, where we already determined x is smaller, then g of x must be less than g of e to the power x. 
That's how an increasing function works. And in this case, g is the natural log. So we can take the natural logarithm of both sides of this inequality. We get that the natural log of x is less than the natural log of e to the power x, which is, of course, equal to x, as these functions are inverses. So we used our inequality for exponentials to prove the inequality for logarithms. So there's one more inequality we'd like to look at, and that is sine. So for all x greater than 0, sine of x is less than x. How do we show that? Well, for x greater than 1, it's not too difficult. We know that sine of x is at most 1 for all x values. So if x is bigger than 1, it has to be bigger than the sine value, um, simply because sine is bounded above by 1. And so it's not too difficult for those values. The values that are a little bit more difficult are x between 0 and 1. So x greater than 0, but less than or equal to 1. And we'll consider the function sine, the one we're interested in. Now, it's a continuous function on the interval from 0 to such a value x. And it's also differentiable on that interval. So by the mean value theorem, which you learned in Math 135, there's some value c between 0 and x, such that the derivative at c is the same as the average value over the interval. Now, we know what the derivative of sine is. It's cosine. So we can fill in the function and its derivative into this equation. And we get cosine of c is equal to sine of x over x. Now, cosine of c, well, cosine is also bounded above by 1. And in particular, since we're on the open interval between 0 and 1, cosine is actually strictly less than 1. There's no value in that interval where it reaches 1. So that means that sine of x divided by x is actually less than 1. Now, we can rearrange this. We multiply by x on both sides. We know x is positive, so we don't change the direction of the inequality. And we get sine of x is less than x for all x greater than 0. So that's the last inequality that we're looking at in this video. I've got a summary here of the four inequalities that we looked at, and they'll be very useful to you to keep in mind while you're trying to figure out what functions you can compare with. And I've got an exercise here just to make sure that you can use these inequalities. So have a go at showing that sine of x divided by x is less than x divided by the natural log of x for all x greater than 0. If you have any questions, feel free to come and talk to me in my office hours or ask on Piazza. Thank you.